Oh yeah, DM DM to those in Miami like Charlie. All right, all right. Greetings, greetings, everyone. GM, GM. If you're in Western time zones, GN. If you're in the Asian time zone like us, welcome to the Bandwagon Podcast. Wow, Harish, it's been a while since we did a podcast. I think like the last time we did it was maybe just before COVID. Yeah, man. So much, so much has changed. Uh, a lot of bad things around the world, but a lot of good things to accommodate those bad things, like the rise of technology. Uh, so yeah, super exciting, man. Yeah. So the reason why we're having this podcast today um, is because we've been observing something really special that's been bubbling in the online space, in the music space, and that is the emergence of Web three, um, blockchain technology, NFTs. Metaverses, DeFi, and seeing that all come together, and it seems like it's opening a new paradigm for artists and fans. And、um, you know, there's just been a lot of curiosity, and sometimes even some misunderstanding on this space of music and Web three. And that's why we wanted to start this podcast, and not just to talk amongst ourselves, but really hear from some subject experts, people who have been in it for some time and who are actively. Uh, Web three natives and、um, really trying to do some interesting stuff、uh, in the space. So you know, before we get started, I thought you know, amidst all that's going on in the world, I think you know we really want to appreciate that we could gather like this. You know, from on three different continents.、Um, you know, Charlie in the US,、uh, MSFT in 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 Europe, and us in in Asia, and just being able to get together as friends and talk about. Our love for music and how technology could help to empower that、uh, further. So, we are going to have a great time today, and、uh, we're going to really push、uh, Charlie and MSFT to the limit and really try to eke out as much as we can from their wonderful minds. And so, today I'm here with my co-host Harish. Harish, how about you introduce yourself and、uh, our guest for today? All right, all right. Yeah, so I'm I'm actually pretty new to this space myself, so I'm really excited to hear from from both of you guys.、Um, we have Charlie Crown. All right, I'm gonna cue one of his tracks, "Hello Stranger" in the background. He is a Miami-based Colombian producer who has released tracks with Sony Music and PRMD with over 25 plus million streams, guys. And he's received nods from some of dance music's biggest names like Chainsmoker and Steve Aoki. Hey, Charlie, how's it going, man? Hey guys,、uh, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the invitation, and I'm really excited to get going with this conversation. All right, all right, man. Oh, I've just gotta wait for this drop, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's go crazy in the house right now. All right, all right. <laughs> loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. Okay. We've also got MSFT. All right, I got one of his tracks lined up here. Hailing from Venice, a city I've always wanted to visit. Rising talent who has spent seven years honing his craft. The Italian producer puts his own unique spin on halftime trap and dubstep. All right, he has released steadily released a handful of powerful bass bangers. All right, Clarence, what do you think? Is that a bass banger at the back there? Of course, of course. It was so good. I had to ask MSFT to send me a link to it, man. I really wanted to listen to the full track on SoundCloud. Amazing stuff, man. MSFT. All right. After countless of hours, he finally emerged with his debut EP "Hands." We're now playing it. Take it back. One of his latest tracks. Hey, MSFP, how's it going, man? How you doing, guys? It's Misfit, music producer from Italy, and yeah, I'm so happy to be here. It's a pleasure for me to contribute to this beautiful space, and thanks for having me, guys. All right. All right. All right. Awesome introduction, guys. So we really wanna. Pull the punches and really get into the thick of things because there's so much to discuss. So I would like to start off with uh, MSFT. Uh, I think we got in touch on Twitter、um, because of Pixel Bands, you know、yeah. this、uh, music NFT project on Solana, where you basically mint an NFT that's either a band member or like a keyboardist, a guitarist, a bassist, a drummer, and you kind of kind of combine them. And、um, I know MSFT you were quite involved. There was a remix contest around some of your stems as well. And、um, you know, if you could back up a bit, you know, before you got there, and just share with us, like, what got you into this whole Web three space? 
Okay, so basically, um, like the majority of us artists, EDM artists especially, I think uh, um, I got into Web3 thanks to Audius. So back in 2020, um, when the first airdrop happened, and I, I, I wasn't, I was familiar with crypto and the whole crypto thing, but mm, I didn't know. And until Audius, I didn't know there were there was the chance to you know combine. Uh, crypto and also music and audios kind of you know uh, opened my eye and helped me getting to know this space a lot better and then mm, everything happened uh, pretty quickly because I got involved uh, uh, mm, together with Charlie with audio grants committee we were together for season two and then I got my application for catalog approved and you know, being surrounded with creative minds and also uh, creative minds in Web3 helped me a lot because I'm very, like, a, a, one of my best friends is Camfly and he's very much involved not only with catalog but also with sound.xyz and with the whole NFT, music NFT world. And yeah, so pretty much it's a, it's a beautiful space and I'm happy to be involved in such a great thing because not only allows artists to be free but also it's in my opinion a new way to communicate and a new way to create the sense of community which was kind of lacking in the whole in the whole EDM industry in the past few years in my opinion and that's it nice nice really cool and we're gonna dive into that a lot more uh, in the coming minutes. Now, Charlie, over to you. I think, you know, apart from being a producer, you're obviously also really knee deep um, in the blockchain space. Um, you know, like um, MSFT was sharing, you're one of the committee members of Audio Grants, a community run um, Audius Grants program. And for those who don't know what Audius is, um, it's a blockchain music streaming platform. And so, Charlie, uh, tell us about what got you into Web3. Hey guys, um, thanks so much for having me. So initially, to be honest, what got me into crypto and NFTs was just curiosity. I remember finding about um, you know crypto and NFTs back in January twenty twenty one, and I was fairly new, uh, finding out about you know MetaMask and wallets and all that stuff. And I remember talking to uh, my friend Cooper Turley. We've been friends for a while from like music stuff from before the crypto, before I found crypto. And and he was, I remember he pushed me a lot to like get involved. Like um, I remember he recommended me to join communities like Song Camp and apply to Catalog and, uh, you know, start getting in conversations and knowing the people that were already in the space. And that's when I met, uh, you know, MSFT and I uh, learned about the grants committee, applied. Uh, then I was uh, fortunately selected for, for a role in, in, the, in the committee. And, and that's basically how I got started, you know, diving deep into NFTs, you know, finding about OpenSea and getting my feet wet uh, with every platform that I could. Interesting, interesting. That's really cool how you both kind of got into the space in a in a fairly similar similar fashion as well. Um, so, as an as a as a newbie, when you guys were two years back in the space, like what what were your thoughts about music NFTs? Why why did you think it it mattered to a musician? Basically, the new uh, basically music NFT uh, is a. Re re relatively new concept so and to be honest when i joined audius uh the platform uh, i didn't even know there there was the possibility you know to mint music as nft and actually uh, buy that and collect that as a token i didn't i didn't even know there was like the remo remotely the, the chance to do that but then as uh charlie said uh, a lot of uh you know, when you join the space, you get to know and get to understand more from uh, very creative uh, minds such as, yeah, Koopa Troopa, but also uh, Web3 uh, Bread, which are, in my opinion, the mm, the leading leading people in the movement, 
which are collector, but also um, a music enthusiast. So, you know, uh, yeah, the, the whole music NFT uh, kind of happened uh, randomly in like in, into my life. But I'm so happy and so glad that I joined this movement because I, I got to I got to know, I got to meet a lot of beautiful people and I I don't regret anything. Interesting. Mm. Okay. What about you, Charlie? Do you have anything to add to that um, about what music NFT is and why it should matter to a musician? I mean, for me, for me, it was kind of similar. So I had no idea what I've done so far was even possible. Like it blew my mind completely. But definitely when I found about platforms like Catalog and I started to research what NFTs could become, I was like completely blown away because for me, and, and this is like an analogy that I like to use when I talk about music NFTs. And I think this is definitely going to help some people understand how I see them. It's like, for me, Spotify and Apple Music, it's like paying an entrance to a museum. You know, you get to pay 10 bucks for the entrance and then you get to go inside the museum and see as many artworks as you can and as many artworks as you like, and you can skip the ones you don't. Uh, but then there's actual people that are the actual owners of those artworks that are in that museum that are renting those artworks to the museum so that people can watch them for a very little price, but they don't own the artworks. That's how I see music NFTs right now. So people are going to be able to still go on Spotify and Apple Music to see all the artworks and listen to all the art they want. But with NFTs now and with music NFTs more specifically, there's going to be people out there that actually own the original piece. So that's how I view music NFTs. And that's when when they really blew my mind. And I was like, wow, I really need to get in on this. Mm, wow. Yeah, Charlie, I love the analogy of, of the idea of a museum. I, I think that kind of helps people to really identify hmm. and kind of have a frame of reference. But I think one of the things I've, I've heard, you know, and kind of, I think there's some confusion around this is the fact that, you know, owning an NFT doesn't necessarily give you um, rights to the songs. And sometimes people think rights, i.e. like I get the royalty revenue, right? Like, could you just touch on maybe the different kinds of music NFTs and, um, you know, what sort of rights a holder would have yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, I think in the artwork, you still don't have like uh, IP rights. I mean, you cannot. I mean, you can take certain artworks from other artists and and just create your brand and do merch and all that stuff and use their IP. Um, but in terms of music NFTs and NFTs in general, for me, what's really appealing is like imagination is the limit. You know, you like you as an artist have the 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 right or like the the freedom to really include whatever you want into an nft i mean if you want the nft to don't include anything and just be like an edition or a vinyl um that's all right and there's a lot of artists doing that in catalog and sound xyz and all these platforms but then you also have the freedom to like include royalties if you want uh with platforms like royal and um you can include tickets to your shows you can include downloadable down, um, downloadable content on on platforms like mintgate and you can gate content there for for token holders you can include access to discord channels ask uh, access to yourself also maybe include like a facetime call with the artist i mean that that's the the more appealing part to me the fact that really your imagination is the limit whatever you can imagine you can include it in an NFT most likely. Great, that's, great. That's and, and MSFT, what's your view on, on this? Uh, basically, I wanted to, uh, you know, Charlie said uh, a while back uh, and like brought up this analogy with the museum, which I think is very, is very correct. Uh, so we were talking about uh, the concept of ownership. Like let's, let's imagine that we're, we're owning paintings. So I'm owning a painting from Picasso. I'm owning a painting from Van Gogh. This doesn't mean that I made that, that I, I have the right to say, okay, this is my, I produced this. 
but that's the concept of the, the concept of ownership there's just one copy and you are the owner so uh, in this case of course these are digital copies that are living forever in the blockchain so the whole co the, the tricky things for a newbie would be the concept of uh, the, the digital ownership because you cannot uh, you cannot formally touch that you can you don't have a vinyl in your in your hands you don't have a physical copy of that but yeah uh, this doesn't mean that you, you do not you do not own that so um, if we as web3 uh, movement and the whole society will slowly um, approach this new form of ownership i think everything will be will be easier to learn and easier to understand and also it will be um, way easier for artists to be to, to be on board uh, into Web3 spaces, in my opinion. And yeah, of course, uh, everything Charlie said uh, is uh, is true and correct. And I want I want to co-sign that. Mm. Mm, I love great, that. Great. I love that. Yeah, love it, love it. And I guess, what do you think are some of the top reasons why um, people hold music NFTs from what you've been seeing in the space? Is it, you know, that Charlie mentioned a whole bunch of things, but what do you think are some of the main benefits that are drawing people to pay uh, for it it's in my opinion it's uh, a sort of investment let's say you you're investing uh, you're investing in some new artists in artists you believe in people you believe not only the music vision but also their web3 involvement involvement and it, it's as, as an investment you cannot have the Im immediate immediate return but you you have to uh, follow the process uh, being in the loop uh, and see and also one of the best thing that uh, actually helped me understand uh, what's uh, what's the main purpose is uh, in a like un under a, a collector perspective uh, was brought to my attention thanks to Cooper Troopers podcast which was uh, released a couple of days ago and it's very interesting and he's, he was saying that uh, Owning the track from an artist you you like is a new level of appreciation. So of course it's an investment. As as an, as an investment, you you think you, you have clear in your mind the monetary and the economic value. But it's also a new level of support, which it's I know it's hard to understand for, from a newbie's perspective. But supporting by owning is uh, is giving so much potential. Is giving so much power and also. I would say emotional connection between the artist and the collector. So that's that's what's game changing to me. Right. Yeah. So I was just yeah I was just really interested about the emotional connection part that you're talking about um, because a lot of the musicians that I follow sometimes do not tour or do not even. I mean, if they have some skill, um, they would be able to go around the world. But some some don't get to, and I don't get to see them personally. Um, so this is a very new way of me. Um, connecting with them exactly. Um, so, do you guys have any examples of like fans that that you've reached a, a a good level of connection with? And like, could you could you share a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I can, I can go first, and then you know, uh, so I can uh, say just one more thing. Uh, yeah, uh, regarding to what you said, uh, like my very first collector uh, was uh, Austin from Audius, and. You know, uh, being in the audio space and working also uh, for Audio Grants Committee, which is an end, which is not directly affiliated with Audios, but you know, we, we get to know each other very very well. Uh, it really uh, it really le left something beautiful inside me because you know uh, it's basically one of the people who are working for a huge company that kind of help you you know understand the whole Web three. Thing and now he's owning your Genesis NFT, uh, Genesis Music NFT. It's something beautiful, you know. Because it's like you know a full circle moment, and definitely something that I, I, I will not forget. And I think that also it's the first Music NFT that Austin is collecting. So I guess it's something special for him, and I hope it's something special for him as well. So yeah, that that's that's what uh, it, it really means a lot to me. Hmm. And what about you, Charlie? Yeah, same. Um, I shared a lot of the sentiment and I have a sim similar story. So I, I run a crowdfund and, and maybe uh, we're going to get to talk about that uh, a little bit later. But 
one of the first contributors to the crowd that I ran was my friend. Uh, his Discord name is Truster. And he was the f absolute first person to contribute. And it was really meaningful to me because for a while, like even for the first month, he was the only contributor. So I, I only had one contributor. And I was, you know, trying to reach out to people and trying to connect and trying to share my crowdfund as much as possible, trying to find uh, more people that were willing to participate. Uh, so because of that, we created a, a, a really, really strong bond. We actually talk like basically every day or every now and then, but we've became, we've become really, really good friends. And wow. he's actually been supporting a lot of the process of the Charlie Crumb project becoming a DAO. He's, he's supporting with, you know, answering questions. He's taught me like probably 70 to 80% of everything I know about NFTs and, you know, what to look for in a project, all that stuff. So, yeah, we basically became friends and, and we created that emotional bond that you like that MSFT was talking about. So it definitely helps on, on a different level rather than, you know, like selling a T-shirt or, or something like that. Mm. Mm. Very interesting. So I think uh, earlier there were two platforms that were mentioned. So uh, one platform was Catalog, uh, Catalog.Works, where it's basically a place where you can buy uh, one-on-ones that are specially, that are unique uh, just to the owner. And there was also Sound.XYZ, which I think uh, MSFT and, and Charlie both mentioned, where you basically can buy one of a set of NFTs. Um, so they are released in a collection like, say, um, 30 or 50 or 100 and you can't mint uh, one of them so now in you guys opinion um you know and this is especially for artists who may be keen uh, after listening to this talk like how do they go about picking like what sort of strategy they should have is it a one-on-one -on -one? is it a collection what's the difference and which is better at least for me in my opinion, I think it would be great to have a scenario where we as artists can make use of all of them. And I'll give you an example of what something like that would look like. So let's say you have your original track and that's probably, of course, going to be the one one But then as a producer and as an artist, uh, sometimes we feel like some songs are never finished or like maybe you could have done something different or you have maybe channels or ideas that you didn't include in the final mix. Uh, so maybe you can create a scenario where you create alternate versions and those can be additions and variations to the one of one. So like the one of one is probably going to be the more expensive one because there's only one. Uh, but then you can do additions of maybe like a VIP mix or an extended mix or uh, uh, a VIP change in, in production from yourself. Or if you can, if you want to go further, you can um, connect with other producers, make uh, have them make remixes of those songs and then release those as additions uh, at a lower tier. So that, you know, there's going to be a collector that's going to, be willing to invest that much money in the one of one but then you also i think you also as an artist have to take into account that not many people are able to afford those nfts but they re they're really your fans and they love your music and they are trying to find ways to join your community your discord your chat and have access to you so i think it's pretty smart to have like um lower tier NFTs or tokens or memberships, uh, however you want to see them, uh, where people that don't have the opportunity to make those high tier purchases can still become part of your community. So that's that's an scenario that I would probably use both platforms. And it's also kind of great for you as a producer or so, right? Because I can imagine that as you're making the tracks and stuff, there's a lot of different ideas that come into your head and like not often you can monetize all the different tracks, the, the different paths that you take as you go along. But now, now there's a way to um, have that art be appreciated. So that's that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, and and there's also you know like the 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 part where you know, and I guess MSFT can can back me up here. We make a lot of music, but not all the music gets released because some yeah. of the music we are it doesn't maybe fit the brand how we want to mm. fit. Uh, or maybe this track doesn't make much, make 
much sense because mm. I want to make more festival music and this track is too chill, so I don't want to put it out right now. So maybe there's an output where you can put uh, create editions of songs that don't come out on Spotify or, or don't have like this big, big promotion budget, but they still are your work. They're still, you know, it's like artists. Mm. Not every piece of artwork is on a canvas. Some of them were just doodles or um, pen and paper. And those artworks, n they're not the official artwork or the final painting, but those artworks, uh, especially for, for from artists that are already dead, uh, those artworks still hold value. And there's mm. still people that collect, you know, sketches from artists or, you know, so that, that would be interesting to like be able as an artist to take my sketches, quote unquote, and create editions and create a, a way from people to still collect them. They don't necessarily have to come out on, on, on DSPs, but maybe there's a way to do that. That's very true. Mm. Very, very true. Also, it, it allows the collector, in my opinion, to also own um, pretty much a, um, a section of the process uh, when you made that song, because it, it could be a VIP, it could be a different own, a different self-made remix of your own track, but it's something that it's not coming out on digital platforms, but you still have that one. So you kind of, you can, you kind of follow the artist you invested in, uh, through the whole, uh, making of the track. And that's, that's interesting in my opinion, that could, as Charlie said, that could uh, shed some light on on other other things, other emotional things. As I was as I, as I was telling before, uh, it, it's it's very interesting, in my opinion, very beautiful. Hmm. Wow! Amazing, amazing stuff. And I kind of want to explore another thing, which. Um, you know, it's, I think it's quite obvious to most um, who are purchasing NFTs. I think earlier, you know, Charlie, you alluded to the fact that, you know, some could be quite pricey for uh, certain, you know, especially for collector pieces, right? It could be um, kind of a bit more pricey. And I, I want to touch on that part about funding because um, I think, you know, you have probably one of the most interesting uh, crypto crowdfunding projects that I've seen um, lately. And I'm just going to share my screen here with... Um, um, with the page so our viewers can have a look and, and this was a really interesting crowdfunding campaign for me because uh firstly i mean it's your what your story about like why crypto and what about this song is, is that you want to create and um you also had um your own token uh the say it token which was named after the track and it was interesting because it, when i read it it felt to me like um almost like a label advance but just now it's it's decentralized to people right so they they would um contribute a certain amount and uh, once you have done the song you will be selling them as nfts and when the nft is sold um the eth will accrue back to the crowdfund contract and you even showed the contract address and, and stuff like that and not only do they um kind of just contribute to that but in, they also have um, nfts which are airdropped and it's like according to certain milestones so like you know if i as a fan i can have the nft to kind of really say that hey i was with Charlie right from the beginning and I thought this was just an amazing way to kind of like integrate some of the things that you and MSFT were, were talking about just wondering if you could talk us through like your thought process like how you came about to craft this kind of crowdfunding campaign amazing amazing thank you for your words uh, so my thought process for the crowdfund was trying to find a way in which I could basically fund the release of my song but don't focus on the monetary or financial aspect of it because i think uh, with the speed that this space is moving at right now there's a lot of of kind of like people that are getting in uh just for the money you know so like you have a lot of scams you have a lot of nft nft projects that just come in uh, make a quick buck and and get out and I didn't want it to see I didn't want it fans or or like general audience to see this crowd from us like okay this guy just wants money and then he just wants to release music and all that stuff so the way I created the crowd from was like okay how can I ask for this amount of ETH but then uh, create it in a way that most of it or more 
or in its entirety, it's coming back to the people that backed the project in the first place. So that's why I created um, the part where, you know, the catalog, the foundation and the glass auctions, 90% of those will go back to the crowdfund contract so that people then can, you know, exchange their say tokens for their share of the ETH that's there. The other 10% from each auction is going back to the creator. So basically I'm keeping very, very little of it. And then um, the thing, the NFTs about the the milestones was um, some feedback that I received from one of my good friends over at Mean Songs. And he said like, hey, maybe you should try to find a way to tie in the token or the crowdfund to the actual success of the song. So I was like, all right, that's a pretty good idea. So, so I created those milestones. So now, um, you know, the backers and the general, you know, community in, in my Discord will be now more uh, motivated to help the song reach those milestones because now we collectively know that for every milestone we're going to get uh, some NFTs airdropped. So in my opinion, that's pretty cool because it's very, very transparent and very clear that I will not be keeping any of it and and I will be using the entirety of the the raised money to really you know deliver nfts deliver music deliver promo deliver uh content and all that stuff which is uh what we are all here for uh regardless of like the monetary value of stuff amazing yeah, I thought this was really cool because I think for some of our viewers who be, who are new to blockchain, you know, you can basically verify um, some of the things that Charlie's talking about. Like, for example, when he um, creates that token, right, you can see the amount that he um, has created. You can also um, look at the supply, how it's flowing, to whose address it's going f uh, to and fro. And I think that's one of the beauties uh, of blockchain and Web3, that transparency and that decentralization um between users and um i mean charlie and i guess msft as well i guess you know when we talk about this idea of crowdfunding you know it's kind of a, a kind of a very different model from how most musicians would think about it right in the past they would go to a label to get an advance make the music make the music mm -hmm. video and you know kind of go from there and i guess you know you you then sacrifice a lot of the ownership um, in 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 the record and um, the royalties as well. Do you see this as a, a different paradigm? And you know how is this really different from like what it was in Web two? Uh, I believe it's it's substantially different uh, because in you're not uh, as you used as we used to do maybe with labels and especially major. Uh, we do not. Uh, get our music and let our music be the object uh, of middlemen in the industry. It's literally people who love your music, people who want to support you, who are uh, in most of crowd, crowdfund crowdfunds cra cases, uh, you know, supporting you, but also, you know, joining your your journey. Uh, I, I remember, I don't remember who made uh, this specific crowdfund, but remember that it was something related to um, every backer in that crowdfund uh, had the possibility to not decide, but uh, kind of help and uh, be in the uh, be in the in the discussion with uh, the artists the artists themselves about the future of their project. So it's kind of you know an involvement, an active involvement that does necessarily doesn't necessarily mean that they own the master and they do whatever they want you know you know um i am quite biased because i am not a huge fan of uh, labels especially major uh but i think that this is a very different story respect of uh, with respect of web 2 web 3 is here to stay and he and it's here to change artists lives in my opinion rather than you know getting the advance and pretty much leaving your music in the hands of some middlemen in the industry, which, which was the case of Web2. These, these, these are my two two cents, of course. Amazing, mm. amazing. I, I agree with that, you know. Uh, and in, in terms of like Web2 and Web3, 
and coming off from my previous point, I don't want to seem like I don't want to make money and I just don't care about money because I do. And of course, like we all here uh, are like very interested in making money. But, and I think here uh, MSFT might, might agree is the fun part of all of this is not making the actual money. Like, I mean, money is going to happen either way. If you are doing things right, money will flow. Yeah. The fun part and where, I personally have the most fun is building stuff. So whenever I make a little money, I don't want to take it for myself and go on vacation. I want to ask myself, and what can I build next? Can I do a smart contract? Can I yes. do a, a drop? Can I give my fans uh, airdrops? Can I give them POAPs? Can I design this, design that? And that's yes. where the fun comes. And uh, regarding Web 2 and Web 3 uh, differences uh, in terms of major labels, for me, it's like, two different scenarios like would i rather give 80 percent of my masters to a label uh and give away my creative freedom and and don't participate as much in the building of my project yeah or would i rather give 50 percent of my royalties to my fans that are people that literally love my music and create it in a way that they actually can make money with me as well so they act automatically stop being fans and they become partners supporters yeah and that for me it's a more appealing scenario where you know what let's all grow together like if i make money you guys make money too so it's a, a beautiful scenario where i don't sacrifice 80 percent of my masters and i retain 100 percent of my creative freedom yes and I, I wanted to add just one thing because it just came to mm -hmm. it came to mind um there is a huge difference also one of the things that i want one of the analogies I always uh, think of when I'm talking about Web3 is when um, a lot of people actually compare Web3 in this actual stage to uh, the old SoundCloud era when uh, per basically mm, 2014, 2015 SoundCloud era when um, a lot of people were interested in the music and the, the market was not saturated and it was an overall joy in discovering new music and you know supporting new artists getting to see uh, their you know their growth and their journey in this case of course this took the whole soundcloud thing to a new level and i feel that uh, it's it's way better than you know getting your music uh, to i don't know some editorial playlist when people you know listen to that but in a very passive way and you do not create a sense of community. You're just, you know, throwing your music out there, which, which to some extent can be fine because it can help you, you know, getting yourself out there to the, the bigger audience. But it's, I feel that with Spotify and the whole web too right now, uh, in music industry, it's more about, you know, a passive, um, a passive way of listening to music rather than uh, listening actively and eventually you know owning and purchasing directly supporting the artists which is which what is happening uh with web3 right now yeah that's so cool man because I, I your your analogy just reminded me of all the times i was back in school and people are like no 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 i heard that artist from soundcloud i was the og yeah and like the number of times you hear that means means there is a lot of weight in in being the the OG, the original listeners yes. and supporters yes. of the fan. People care. Yes. Yeah, I just made that connection in my head and I was like, oh yeah, this this stuff really does matter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. yeah. And now now it's now it's even more elevated than just being on SoundCloud. Now you you own it. A hundred wow. yeah. That's that's really cool. Now it's it, now it clicked, it's, in, it now, clicked now, in my guys, head. Yeah. yeah. And now it's more elevated. Like yeah. imagine imagine this scenario where it, it happens exactly what happens to SoundCloud. So, you know, a bunch of people start creating NFTs on catalog and people get discovered and the whole SoundCloud things happens again. But now every OG that was there from the beginning now has mm -hmm. a POAP or a, an NFT to like that reminds them of the fact that they were an OG. And now they can prove they can socially prove yeah. to other people <laughs> that they were an OG. Yeah. So that's insane. Absolutely. Wow. I kind of wish I bought NFTs of those uh, early SoundCloud artists now. 
Damn. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> imagine having some Kygo NFTs damn. when he was, you know, yeah, releasing damn. remixes <laughs> yeah. like every two weeks. Because yeah, I was really there. I, I swear, I tell my friends I was really there, but I got no proof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, I think that. Um, yeah, it's really, really interesting, like what you guys are doing. And there's so many people like me that are just now just hitting the realization of like, um, how interesting web three is. And it's great that there's so much information out there about, um, the positives, but I feel like it's also important to talk about the setbacks and just be transparent about it. Um, so yeah, could you guys share, maybe you could hear from MSFT first, um, about, yeah, some of the setbacks of Web3, um, some of the things you realized through trial and error. Yeah. Um, hmm, that's, that's a very... Hmm, that, that, that's a very interesting question. So, um, yeah, trial and error is basically what makes people grow, I believe, in every scenario, in every workspace. In Web3, I feel that there is no error so it's more about experimenting it's more about uh getting to know the community and actually uh adjust maybe your vision and see and of course it's also a matter of adaptability you need to be um you need to be down to adapt yourself to this space you're involving yourself into because you already know that the other people in the space are down to adapt themselves uh, with your view, with your project, it's you know, it's it's about uh, it's all about, in my opinion, uh, finding a common way, a common path, and it, so that's why I don't think there are actually errors. It's all it's all about you know trying, experimenting, of course, but I I, I don't see uh, you know uh, making mistakes in Web three because you're it's we are so early in the space, it's so new, and making something that could be potentially consider an error right now could be in a two year span could be you know the the the, the, the like a million dollar move you know so it's mm. it's yeah it's all about experimenting it's all about being down to understand being down to listen being down to experiment and in that way you're going to you're going to you know getting your your name out there and actually and eventually you know uh being satisfied with your journey in Web3. That's what I think. Cool, cool. That's very interesting, man. Um, what about you, Charlie? What do you think about um, either what MSFT has said or about the just the general question? I, I share the, the same views. You know, um, for a while I thought, you know, I was maybe making mistakes and I was doing things wrong and stuff like that. But then the more I was, you know, Kind of like involved in the in the community. I learned uh, from what other people say and stuff like that, and and I learned for things like there's no stupid questions in Web three, and and there's also no experts in Web three or crypto or or like NFTs. We are all collectively doing this for the first time ever in the history of humanity. So mm. nobody knows what's gonna happen. Nobody knows how to do things, and, and 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 I think that's what appeals to me the most. Because as a child, I was also like you know trying games and downloading um, pirated music and trying software, you know torrents and all that stuff. So naturally, I gravitated towards doing exactly the same that I'm doing right now, which is trying websites, trying protocols, trying projects, and trying communities, and you know just seeing if I like them or not. And I think um, those are like the the challenges, you know, like finding those platforms, getting in early and, and experimenting, experimenting a lot without expectations. Like don't like don't go on main songs expecting to sell out and don't go on catalog expecting to sell a one ETH NFT. Just go on there and mint your first NFT. There's that's only going to happen once. Once it's on the blockchain, that's your first NFT ever. So Make it a special. Mm. Your first NFT is going to be, to be your first NFT ever. So, mm. yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a that's a good question, and I, I think I want to segue into a question. I guess from 
the artist standpoint and for those who for, for those who are new and the thing is like let's say if they were to mint something like a sound xyz right or nft like other people who are most likely going to buy it going to be existing fans or are there already people uh, in the web tree space um who maybe you know are flush with like buying bitcoin in from 20 20- 15 you know and they're flush with with uh, crypto and, and these are the guys who are going to invest i think uh what do you think of this are there people in web3 who are going to support this or do they have to count on their own fan bases because sometimes they're not sure whether their fan base is in crypto yeah i think um i think and and this is something that um cooper totally mentioned and basically taught me earlier and it's like building Web3 like from scratch as if you had nothing because um, it's not convenient or like wise at this time to invest your time and energy into trying to convert uh, your fan base from Web2 to Web3. It's, it's, it's a lot of uh, hand-holding there. So like, you know, wallet creation mm. wallet security explaining what crypto and blockchain is it's very difficult to like you know try to get your instagram fans into catalog and buy something so um i think it's it's very wise to start in web3 as if you had nothing and start you know connecting with other artists uh, participating in communities contributing with your music or with your opinion or with your knowledge and then from there, uh, you're gonna people are gonna find out about your music, and you're gonna start to build a new fan base there. Then once that's kind of like growing consistently, and you're like creating a lot of attention for yourself in the space, naturally, a few people over in Web two are going to start to get curious, and mm-hmm. they're gonna start to ask questions, and that's when you put in the word to like bring them over. But you have to, like, you know, spark their curiosity first. So you're saying that, you know, like, sometimes converting existing fans, you know, may not be the simplest of things. And, you know, it's really trying to build up your own Web3 native fan base. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Great, great. Awesome, awesome. Now, we are going to really try to push this to the limit and try to get as much out of you guys because, you know, we really want to learn from the experience. And uh, we want to shift to this this other term besides NFTs, which has been dominating a lot of the headlines recently. And I know you guys are familiar with it, and that's why I really want to kind of get your expertise on this. And that's the idea of a DAO, right? Um, a digital autonomous organization. I think we've seen this term kind of thrown around a lot i was just um you know reading one of the reports from um you know from uh, water and music uh, sherry and her team been doing a great job and they've been talking about the different DAOs that have been uh, showing up and actually how sometimes um you know it, that the understanding of what a DAO is kind of diluted a lot of people think that oh it's like something like an organization run by smart contracts but yet, uh, sometimes some of the applications, it's like not really. Sometimes uh, for some of the DAOs, it's just simply like a community. And I really wanted to pick your brains on this because I think like Charlie, you've also um, are you know going to be starting this Charlie Crown DAO. So I really wanted to you know have you guys to kind of speak on this topic of a DAO. Maybe you can start with like, what is it? Why does it matter? And, and how do you feel that like you could value um, the entire music journey? Wow, wow. That's a <laughs> that's a packed question right there. <laughs> right, that's right. Really pushing you to the limit here. Well, to be honest, I don't think anybody knows what a DAO is in its entirety. And we're just, you know, starting to grasp a little bit of the tip of the iceberg or what a DAO could really mean. Um I think the decentralized and autonomous parts get most of the attention uh, but really the most important part of a DAO I think it's the organization part uh, because I don't think every DAO is going to be 100% decentralized or 100% autonomous I mean mm-hmm. in the case of myself and, and some other creator DAOs that I know uh, things like vision and creative freedom are not decentralized and are not autonomous depend entirely on the artist uh, but what I think it's the 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 
appealing part of of a DAO. It's that organization part where you can, where you now have the tools to uh, coordinate and organize massive amounts of people at scale. Uh, that being through a token, through governance, uh, through ownership of a treasury, and all that stuff, and and. I don't want to see like a. I don't want to seem like I know a lot because I definitely don't know anything about <laughs> building a DAO. I'm just going through the process and learning all this stuff while I go. So like, sorry if I say something that's not uh, accurate. But yeah, for me it's that. For me it's like, um, it it. It's like my will to have a scenario where I can together with my community coordinate and 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 deploy and create things all together and kind of like drive towards that vision that of course is my vision but um i'm also open to like letting the community participate in that vision and and if you as a fan share that vision and want to contribute um there's gonna be ample opportunities for you to actually make that your job so like actually be part of a dao earn revenue earn royalties, share a treasury with me, share some decisions with me and and kind of like as a fan, it's a tool that I can use to give you that sense of ownership, to make you feel like when you're at a festival listening to the song I'm playing, you feel like you own the project too because you actually do, you know? Mm. But I'm still, you know, coming to terms with 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 the vision and and I keep asking myself a lot of a lot of questions every day because definitely a DAO can be many many things and I'm still trying to you know decide what mine's going to be like it's very yeah I feel very blurry <laughs> I feel the organization part that Charlie said is very important in a DAO, in a DAO. um of course there are different DAOs and different uh different, I would say, goals for the DAO, uh, different communities, different, uh, you know, uh, a DAO means uh, pretty much anything. You can you can give uh, any mean, any goal to a DAO. What actually matters is the concept of organization, concept of community that you're going to give to, to a DAO based on tokens, social, to social community tokens that you can give through... You know, um, even uh, community calls, roles. Uh, yeah, it's 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 still a not a blurry um, a blurry topic, but it's uh, so huge. It, it could be the the conversation here could be so huge that it's really hard to actually you know encapsulate and uh, kind of you know try to break the DAO concept down in one sentence or two. It's literally huge. It could be, yeah. Uh, it's it, it's it's all based on the concept of community, which is like the the, the drive through the Web three space, in my opinion. And yeah, and then everything comes uh, comes after that. That's that's the thing. Yeah. Also, my my uh, answer is not complete at all uh, because I'm still new to the DAO, to the DAO concept and the the the, the DAO creation as well. But I'm very interested in knowing more. Uh, I remember reading a tweet by one of the major Web3 music collectors uh, talking about creating a DAO for samples and loops. And this, I, I thought about that pretty much every day since I read that tweet. And I wanted to know more on how that could be created, that could be deployed. So yeah, it's still, the DAO concept is still something Especially artists need to dive into a bit more to understand all the to understand the full the full potential of a DAO, especially for artists themselves. Hmm. Yeah, from what I'm hearing, like the sky's the limit, right? I mean, I, 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 like, yeah. I like the idea of samples and loops, and I think uh, you know MSFT, you've got some really awesome loop packs, right? I, <laughs> I see that included with your um, catalog NFT as well. Yeah, they're part of the utility. Even, even though I'm, I'm not a huge fan of actually no material utility, I think that that could be, you know, a a little plus that could, you know, be something also, you know, something more to give to the to the to the owner to the future owner of the of the track. 
Right, and they also get unreleased music folder, right, in in yeah. Dropbox. Yeah, because you know wow. that, and that's really important to me because you know when you uh, purchase, actually when you own, when you bid a, a song of mine, you actually you know interested in my music and in knowing my music. So I'm interesting in getting to to know you, and I'm interesting to showing you my music, my unreleased music first because I want to know you what you think because you're one of the you know the investor in my project actually and you deserve that wow fantastic fantastic i think this is just a real paradigm shift you know what i'm hearing and just that level of participation that could happen with web free and music amazing yeah amazing stuff all right all right the last thing last topic that we kind of want to move into is new projects everybody loves some alpha especially um, from people that are deep in the trenches like you guys. So what are some new growing music NFT projects that each of you are excited about? Uh, in, in general yeah. or like from, or from ourselves? Uh, from either, yeah. I mean, uh, mm. I'm actually interested in... I've been talking with a bunch of people and I've been hearing good things about future and potential interesting project on music NFTs on Solana. I'm actually interested and I created a Holoplex store with Solana, Solana based. And, you know, uh, one of the, the interesting things is uh, in Web3 music is, you know, to explore different spaces, different areas. And I feel that right now Solana space is still pretty much uh, a gray area because there are a lot of uh, NFTs project, but pretty much uh, none like um, related to music. So that would be interesting to see if there's something that can be done within the Solana space. And then speaking about uh, music in general, I'm so stoked for the progress of you know platforms such as Main Songs, of course, Catalog and Sound X Y X Y Z, especially Sam G mm. Sam Sam G, which which is one of the best Ari Cyber is going to drop on sound on Friday and I'm so stoked for that because it's gonna be it's gonna be memorable in my opinion. Right. And what about what about for your own projects? What are you excited about? Oh I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely you know uh, excited to finish finish to release all my tracks from AP and catalog and then yeah I'm planning to right. create a New visual, audiovisual experience on Holoplex, which is, as I said before, a Solana store. I wanted to, you know, create a short uh, video loop that could be like one minute long and where I, you know, experiment with sounds a bit more when I go out of my comfort zone and where I kind of, you know, release music that I wouldn't release as Misfit on my main my main channel my main you know main pages so that 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 would be that would be one of my most interesting move because i'm so stoked for that and again the, the the best part is that i'm excited not to you know potentially make money or blah blah i'm just excited to explore the space i'm just excited to see mm -hmm. where this journey is taking me and where my fans are you know are taking me because i you know it, it's it's all about the community Mm. And what about you, Charlie? Amazing, amazing. Um, as far as projects, I'm I'm really excited about the Solana ecosystem as well. Uh, spe specifically, uh, this platform called Form Function. And I think uh, it's it's gonna be really interesting what those guys do uh, for the music space in Solana, mm. especially for you know costs and stuff so that artists are going to be able to like maybe create cheaper mints for for you know another tier of fans that still want to be part of your community but cannot afford to go on ethereum i'm really excited about catalog as well um sound xyc i'm really excited to see them on board more artists and and definitely more latin artists and, and european artists as well mm. um i'm excited about Min songs. Um, I think um, seeing one on one some min songs are, is going to be really exciting as well. Uh, just because they're on Polygon as well, so it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool 
that they combine both editions and and one of ones. It's gonna be interesting. Mm. And yeah, as far as communities, I'm also excited about Song Camp. Uh, we just kicked in the the Camp Chaos, and I'm really excited to to participate in that and, and write music with the community. So that's that got me pretty excited as well. And mm. uh, personal projects, you know, um, yeah. I have this song. I, I minted my first record on on Catalog. And and the cool thing about that is I'm gonna use fifty percent of the sale to officially fund the Charlie Crown Dow Treasury for the first time ever. So that's sick. pretty exciting for me. Yeah, that's sick. and then you know, like the whole Dow creation, it's it's pretty exciting journey that I'm embarking on right now. Very cool, very cool. Really All cool. right, that's really interesting, guys. Looking at the the stuff in the future that um you guys are working towards. Um, as we round out the chat for some viewers who are keen to learn more, uh, besides you two, who do you suggest for these people to follow? Just perhaps, yeah. Oh, well, there are actually a bunch of uh, creative minds in music, web three, music NFT space. Uh, as Charlie mentioned, yeah, Cooper Turley, aka Cooper Trooper, um, Web3 Brett, uh, Spins, 808, uh, who else? There are actually a lot because they are not only investors and collectors, they are actually creative mind who try and put their best into, um, you know, uh, widen, I would say, the conversation, create new means, create new, uh, create alternatives for artists, and of course, collect uh, their music and invest in their music. Uh, yeah, Shane Copland. There are actually a bunch of names who are very interested uh, in Web three, and they worth a follow because they they're very they're very you know uh, very uh, passionate about it. Which is yeah, passion would be the, the right word in my opinion. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I, I can I can actually try to make a list and send that afterwards if you guys are interested, and also if you guys are interested in sharing that list with your with your community. Uh, me and Charlie, we can try to make a list of, you know, cool, cool, creative minds in Web3 yeah. space that worth follow. If you, if you guys want, that's something we can do. Yeah, that sounds so sick, man. Yeah, <laughs> I would love yeah, to even just give that. it a follow, man, for, of course, just, of just course. for myself. Yeah, yeah, great. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so um, I think we've had an amazing chat, uh, more than an hour, amazing content. And I thought um, it would be nice to round off the chat um, with uh, something that I saw from uh, MSFT that I thought kind of reflects like the discussion we're having today. Um, and this was, I don't know if you remember this MSFT, February 12th, uh, yeah. last month, right? Thinking about the future of electronic music for him, but I guess in general, music in Web3 gets him excited. And I think, um, you know, I, I think safe to say, Charlie as well. I'm sure you know the excitement is is, um, is full on for you. Just being um, you know in the in the midst of it and really just pioneering new models and new ways to look at things. So thank you guys, you know, for your time here. Uh, we've come to the end of the podcast. It's been an amazing chat. And uh, personally, you know, I, I came uh, to this chat learning like five things. Um, you know, firstly. Um, having a meaningful connection and Web3 enabling that meaningful collection, uh, connection between an artist and the fan. Uh, you know, it's a way that we can go direct instead of through a platform like it would be in Web2. Now in a decentralized way, people can have direct relationships and being vested in ownerships uh, of the artist's content. And uh, thirdly, I think both of you touched on the sense of community that this um, brings about. And uh, fourthly, that we are still early, right? And um, everything is an experiment. And though you think something may not work so well now, it could just be the next million dollar move. And uh, lastly, I think also you talked about developing a Web3 fan base that um, you know you don't need, only need to count on your existing fan base to back your Web3 moves. You could still find uh, fans and supporters within Web3 itself. So um, with that, I'd just like to thank you guys for your time and thank you, Haresh, uh, for your awesome uh, co-hosting. And so guys, if you enjoyed this video, 
uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, let us know in the comment section if you have any questions or any things we could address in future uh, videos or any guests that you think uh, we should bring aboard. Uh, once again, this is Bandwagon's podcast on Web3 and music. Thanks to our guests, Charlie Crown, MSFT, Harish, my co-host. Thank you, guys. Amanda, our producer. Take care. GM or GM, wherever you are. We'll see you in the next one. All Bye. right. All right, man. Woo. Take care, guys. <laughs>